Hi, welcome to Taxation TV. This week it's all about, well, Amazon, Verizon. And we talk about tablets on a day we don't have any. Hi, and welcome to Taxation TV. My name's Rusty G. I'm Alan. And it's episode number 47. And I think the biggest news of this past week that I would love to talk about because it deals with music and I'm a huge music movie collector. Yes. Uh, Amazon Cloud, they have announced their cloud service which matches up to iTunes Match. Uh, this is a great thing because they're doing the same thing, $24.99 mm -hmm. a year. Not a month, a year, 25 bucks a year. All your music gets synced up to the cloud. You can play it on any device. Amazon Kindle, uh, iTunes, well, it'll play in iTunes because it'll download to your PC if you have the Amazon Cloud app on your yeah. PC. Uh, it can also play to your iOS devices if you have the Amazon Cloud Player. It's an app for the iOS. So it's just like having you know, Amazon Cloud to your iOS device, iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. So I think, personally, this is a lot better than iTunes Match because it goes to all these devices, including your Android devices as well. So you're not dealing with the DRM issues. Correct. And the other thing is, iTunes Match gives you an AAC file, mm -hmm. which theirs isn't DRM'd. It is, but it isn't. It is because it has to attach to your iTunes account. But you can burn it as many times as you want, play it as many times as you want, and there's no... It's yours. Yeah, because exactly. it's yours to begin with. Yeah. So iTunes gives you an AAC version. Uh, Amazon gives you an MP3 version. So that is awesome. So it's a little bit more universal. Not every, you know, even though at this day and age, I don't think AAC versus MP3 is really a battle anymore. No. But, you know, it gives you uh, the versatility with an MP3. Uh, the other thing is Amazon pretty much stepped all over iTunes Match with this. iTunes Match does 25,000 songs, which is a lot. That's a lot of songs. Yeah, I only own like 6,000. And when I say own, I use the word very loosely because you and I both collected a lot of songs over the years. Uh, but Amazon Cloud does, get this, 250,000 songs. Order of a million songs. In the cloud. That is amazing for Amazon you know, being able to play across all your devices. So that really negates the fact of having a 32 gig, a 64 gig, anything, you know. Exactly. Everything comes from the cloud, so you can have it on your iPod Touch, again, your Android device, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm sure if the need were necessary, BlackBerry, and we'll talk about BlackBerry here in a few minutes, but you know, that's awesome. So. I mean, Amazon, they've got 20 million songs in their catalog. iTunes has 28 million, so you're talking about an, a difference of 8 million songs, but who really cares? I mean, like I said, I've got like 6,000 songs, so. And it seems the record industry is now favoring Amazon over Apple. Oh, yeah. So, Amazon's just going to keep continuing getting more and more catalogs. Yeah. So, there's really no reason, well, I can't say it because I own all Mac products, but there's really no <laughs> reason to stay with iTunes. Yeah. I, I, um, I, unless you own... Uh, iOS device that you need to connect to iTunes to update, which you don't even need to do that anymore with the cloud, but yeah. there's really no reason. Yeah. Also, this isn't for everybody. If you own like one crisscross tape, and... <laughs> I can bring that out if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. And like Barry Manilow sings Christmas carols, and this isn't for you, but for people like us who have a pretty good wide selection, it's... It's a great product. Yeah, if you remember the old days, you know, radio DJs, things like that, they would have walls of CDs. That's pretty much us, except for it's in digital format. We have a crap ton of music. I mean, between the two of us, I'd say we have that 10,000 song. Yeah. You know, maybe 10,000 songs or something like that. So it's not overly large, but we have a lot. So awesome on Amazon Cloud. If you get it, go download the Amazon Cloud Player for your PC, Mac, Android device, iOS device. Go check it out. I mean, you're paying a yearly fee. You might as well enjoy it on all platforms. I, I think for 25 bucks, you can't beat it. So I've... I have already, I have not signed up for it, but I really do think I am going to sign up for it. So, uh, other big news this past week, though, coming out of the Verizon camp, uh, I've actually said this before that I was thinking about switching to Verizon because in Nashville, AT and T hasn't set up their LTE yet. But as of last week, we found out we LTE, LTE is finally in Nashville. So until I can get an LTE device, uh, which I had stolen from me in Peru, no hard feelings, but. 
uh, until I get an LTE device to be able to test one out on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I think I'm going to wait for the new iPhone coming up in September. By the way, yes, we heard about it. September 12th is the announcement. September 21st, possible uh, launching of the device. We mm -hmm. know about it, but we're not going to talk about it. But Verizon actually has filed, or the FCC has filed with Verizon. They now have to pay a $1.25 million price tag for the 700 megahertz, I think it's the C block, that they had to pay for because previously they were not allowing for devices to tether, or not really tether, but have a phone be as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So for instance, if you had a Verizon device, you had to pay an extra $20 yeah, you gotta pay. for that option. Well now, because they bought into the 700 megahertz LTE, FCC says no, part of your deal on having this was you can't charge for that. That's great. Yeah, which is awesome for Verizon. <laughs> Not so much for Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile, or the other providers because you're still having to pay that 20, 30, whatever. We're still getting ripped off. Yeah, so. Uh, and we gotta use. Uh, we gotta jailbreak our yeah. devices and we gotta use MyWi. My or that's for it. Android, yeah. it's something else. And for BlackBerry, it's something else. But yeah, you have to go outside the confines of the rules, basically, and you know, be in that gray area and you know yeah you could get a text from AT&T that says we know you're using this stop using it da da da, da. but you know, I don't use it enough to you know do that but I think yeah. that's great uh, Verizon also just announced just a little over a month ago their Verizon share everything plan which is not so good for users on one to two phones but if you've got a family of like five or six it starts making a little bit more sense so that shared data, everything plan. Yeah, you know, the higher tier you go up, it makes more sense if you have, like you said, a big family. But low end, no. Not yeah. At all. Matter of fact, I just a friend, of, a mutual friend of ours, uh, is actually getting into uh, getting Verizon iPhones, and he's going to be doing something like that. He just won't be doing the data. He'll be doing text messaging, picture messaging, minutes, mm -hmm. and everything. So I think that's great when you get five or six phones all together at once. But a family like mine, where it's just like three of us, it doesn't make sense. So. Uh, but you know the fact that Verizon is being charged via the SEC for this I hope I hope I hope that in the future AT&T Sprint all them have to follow suit hopefully if enough people complain to the FCC unless I'm pretty sure AT&T is paying someone in the <laughs> FCC something but hopefully if enough people raise up then yeah we won't need to be charged for tethering it's like being charged for texting it's just yeah, it's outlandish. Yeah, it's it's stupid. It's the largest profitable uh, piece of their tool belt. It's really frustrating. But also a side note, AT and T just bought into the uh, 650 million or 650 billion. Don't get me on the million or billion, but 650 uh, for buying into the next couple two three years and we doing some LTE expansion through Next Wireless or something like that. I didn't get the full details on that story, but uh, so futures coming for you know. The wireless world's changing, so I think that's completely awesome. A um, couple things that we did want to talk about. Two new tablets have just been announced, uh, and obviously you can tell we don't have ours. Mine was stolen. I don't know where yours is. But <laughs> anyway, uh, Arcos just announced their ultra-thin 10G tablet, uh, which is supposed to be coming out in late August. There is no price yet. Uh, it looks a lot like some of their other, other tablets where they dock into a keyboard. It's not like a laptop where it folds, but you can buy the tablet separate and the keyboard separate and you can dock it. Pretty cool. Uh, we've seen some videos on it. You can see it here. It looks pretty nice. It's, you know, it's a tablet. Yeah. Just like all the others. Uh, you know, it's going to be tablets for a long bit until, you know, laptops go away, which I don't think will ever go away. Yeah. Everybody likes a hard keyboard and that's the reason why these tablets come with those. Uh, what was the other tablet that was just announced? Well, this is ho they're hoping they're hoping that this tablet is the uh, the paddles to save the company. <laughs> and clear, it's the <laughs> Playbook 2.0. Do they name it the 2.0? I don't know if they named it that. I know it's the 4G LTE. It's the next one, yeah. 4G LTE. You know, they're trying to put all the letters on there to you know. Hopefully, this this will be the one that helps rim out. Doubt it. But let's talk about it. <laughs> If you have the old playbook, you know it's it's slow. It you couldn't have Gmail, you couldn't have pictures. Con it, there's a lot of limitations that if someone with an iPad came up, even his first generation, it would still blow you out of the water. <laughs> but there's a new update. 
So now you have Gmail and the contacts, the messaging, the this, the that. You can keep up with them. Oh, nice. Yeah. But like I said, save the company. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like I've, I've heard rumors of outsourcing too. So yeah, their last coal in the fire. Basically, they're yeah. trying to keep it hot, and it's like, nah, it's, you guys, you guys are going. No price yet for it. I think was August was. It might be a late August, yeah. September, something like that. Like late this month or early next month. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I just don't think that that's going to be the saving grace for Rim. Mm. We talked about it in previous episodes. That's a dying ship. It's going, sinking slowly down. Along uh, with Facebook's stock price today, if you didn't <laughs> notice. Under $20. We didn't want to get too much into that. But also, Facebook is also mandating, by the way, just another side note. I, we trail like this, but Facebook is now also mandating later this year timeline so if you want to complain about it go ahead it doesn't matter complain on your timeline because <laughs> uh, later this year you will have to have the timeline no matter what but uh, one company that is trying to make a comeback under the umbrella of the name because I don't think it, it's they were bought out so it's no longer the same company anymore yep. but dig dig we both used for mm -hmm. years matter of fact I was just telling you when I logged in looks great I think it looks wonderful kind of uh, what's the app that we use now for news on the flipboard. iPad it's kind of flipboard ish yeah it looks wonderful it's big on the pictures title underneath and a little bit of text underneath in your big stories it's really user friendly oh yeah wonderful um, it was bought out by news.me slash their parent company I don't remember their parent company but it looks really good check it out go to diggg.com check it out it's it looks great and it's a great place for news if you don't want to go through and read every single website like I do for Google Reader it just kind of hits you some of the headlights and you yeah. can dig through it and kind of check it out um, nothing to set up you can just go and it's there yeah and the, and the only thing that I don't like about it is I had been with dig since the inception about eight to ten months later so I've been there since about 2005 yeah, that's when I joined that account no longer there so I no longer have any you know hey you've been here since blah 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 which I've always liked you know knowing that I've been with a company for so long and now that's gone so that's eh, you know whatever so but go check it out dig.com and see what you think anything else no that wraps it up alright make sure you follow us online we've got a multiple amount of different places I'm gonna start it out with youtube.com slash TV. Add us Facebook.com slash TV. You can follow us on uh, Google Plus. Add us to your circles. It's G plus dot T O slash TV. You pinners out there, pin us Pinterest.com slash TV. For those of you still on the Twitter, Twitter.com slash TV. And speaking of Twitter, real quick, the Olympics have been flooding, flooding Twitter. And yes. I mean, when Ryan Seacrest is talking about it on NBC, how many tweets per second that this event got? That this event got and past sports events and like got. all those athletes you never heard of, well, unless you were watching Olympics eight years ago. But their Twitter accounts have just exploded. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous at this point. But uh, so basically, uh, you, you know, you want to get your Twitter account up, you got to swim fast and do some <laughs> cartwheels. Get out there. It's not easy. Also, I at this point am about to literally erase TextNation.tv. It, it, it doesn't exist. It, TextNation.tv, it's there. It's I think the last episode was like 25, 26, something like that. So I'm a little bit behind. I will get to it at some point, I swear to you. But TextNation.tv. And you can follow him separately if you would like. Twitter.com slash T-X-T-A-L-L-E-N. And you can follow him at... R U S T Y G. Why do we got to spell it? I don't know. It just comes it naturally. It says it right there. All right. It's right there. But we will see you again for episode number 48. Thanks again for watching. Tell your friends. Spread the word. Please share us about with all your tech buddies. Yes. We need gas money. <laughs>